Hi there, now we're going to do lesson 37. My holiness blesses the world. This idea contains the first glimmers of your true function in the world or why you are here. Again, this lesson contains the first glimmers. We're beginning to see now the purpose of why we are here in the world. Your purpose is to see the world through your own holiness. Isn't that beautiful? That's really our purpose. Because if we see the world through our holiness, everything that we see will be holy to us. It has to be. Sentence number three. Thus are you and the world blessed together. No one loses. Nothing is taken away from anyone. Everyone gains through your holy vision. It signifies the end of sacrifice because it offers everyone his full due. And he is entitled to everything because it is his birthright as a son of God. When we begin to separate the world into the haves, the have-nots, the, the good people, the bad people, the um, this party, political party, that political party, this side of, of the country, that side of the country, those on this side of the railroad tracks and on the other side of the tracks, wrong side of the tracks, as people say, my football team, your football team, my company, your company, my family better than your, your family. When we do those things and we begin to divide, we are totally and completely not living our purpose because we're not seeing the holiness of the other. When somebody has to win, somebody has to lose. Inside of that, there is no equality. There is no room for God's holiness to emerge. It doesn't mean that we're all going to be the same, but it does mean that we are all equal. This is very key. So let me continue with paragraph two. There is no other way in which the idea of sacrifice can be removed from the world's thinking. No way the idea of sacrifice can be removed. If we stop seeing as anybody deserving to be sacrificed, anybody being lesser than and, and can be discarded, when we stop believing that anybody should lose, things are going to change drastically for us. Any other way of seeing will inevitably demand payment of someone or something. We're going to want to take revenge. We're going to want to attack. We're going to feel like they owe us something if we decide that somebody deserves to sacrifice. Sentence number three. As a result, the perceiver will lose. The one who's making that assumption is going to lose. Nor will he have any idea why he is losing. This is yet in... Yet is his wholeness restored to his awareness through your vision. Your holiness blesses him by asking nothing of him. Those who see themselves as whole make no demands. When we recognize our wholeness, our worthiness, there's no need to defend ourselves with people who are accusing us. I know when my former husband, Ken, was believing that I was cheating on him, which never happened, I, I, in the beginning, I was trying to defend myself. I wanted him to see that he was he was making a mistake. But then it became really clear that even my defenses appeared to him. He made him appear in his own mind that I was attacking him. And I wasn't trusting what he was sensing, what he was feeling. So that's when I decided th there's no need to, to sacrifice this relationship. Let's just let it go. Let's just be defenseless and let it go. And we be I began to see that in my wholeness, I didn't need to make a demand of him. In his insanity, it was okay. He was per perceiving the world one way, but yet in my holiness, I was blessing him in the world. Paragraph three, your holiness is the salvation of the world. Your wholeness is, is the salvation of the world. Why is that? Because when you know your wholeness, you don't defend, you don't attack, you don't need to prove anything. The game, the game of win and lose ends. Yes, things might have a, uh, a completion that might feel like a loss, like in my case it was a divorce, but I didn't see it as a loss for me. I saw it as just nothing more than, than what had to happen to prove that one person believed one thing and the other believed another. That's not a loss. That's simply a parting of the ways. It's just going to happen as long as we're humans and we have ego. We are going to have to have these, make these decisions where we're going to part ways. However, you can still hold your wholeness 
at the same time as you hold theirs in your consciousness, then your holiness blesses the world. How beautiful is that? Let's go to paragraph, oh, continuing on paragraph three. Your holiness is the salvation of the world. It lets you teach the world that it is one with you. Not by preaching to it, not by telling it anything, but merely by your quiet recognition that in your holiness are all things blessed along with you. As long as I could see my former husband's holiness in my mind, I only saw his perfection. In my mind, I was able to free him from my judgments and it freed me. And inside of that space, I felt so blessed that I could bless him and didn't need to get anything from him. Clearly not the way that the world teaches us to deal with divorce, but the way that felt right to me because I wanted my holiness to bless the world because I wanted to feel giving and receiving are one. I wanted to feel blessed inside by blessing others. Paragraph four, today's four longer exercise periods, each to involve three to five minutes of practice, begin with a repetition of the idea for today, followed by a minute or so of looking about, about you as you apply the idea to whatever you see. My holiness blesses this chair. My holiness blesses that window. My holiness blesses this body. Then close your eyes and apply the idea to any person who occurs to you using his name and saying, my holiness blesses you, Ken. My holiness blesses you, Spencer. My holiness blesses you, Tony. My holiness blesses you, Lauren. Those happen to be my three children. How beautiful that those thoughts came to my mind. Paragraph five, you may continue the practice periods with your eyes closed. You may open your eyes again and apply the idea for today to your outer world if you so desire. You may alternate between applying the idea to what you see around you and to those who are in your thoughts. Or you may use any combination of these two phases of application that you prefer. The practice period should conclude with a repetition of the idea with your eyes closed and another following immediately with your eyes open. So you go to the place of my holiness blesses the world. My holiness blesses the world. It's beautiful. It's powerful. Paragraph six. The shorter exercises consist of repeating the idea as often as you can. It is particularly helpful to apply it silently to anyone you, you meet. Using his name as you do so, it is essential to use the idea of anyone seems to cause an adverse reaction in you. Offer him the blessing of your holiness immediately that you may learn to keep it in your own awareness. This is what's key. When you're blessing people, it's in your, oh, it's in your awareness, it's in your mind that the holiness of everybody is 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 real you are activating the part of you that is holy but you have to keep it in your awareness but it can't be in your awareness if you don't choose to believe that this is possible so enjoy today's lesson and i look forward to seeing you again in tomorrow's lesson thanks and have a magnificent day